education now instead of you and i you know awaiting results and knowing what my child did i i did not know my teachers it brought teachers home now teachers of course it was tough being a teacher they were being judged but that pushed them to be better as a parent they could see if the pronunciation is good is the subject knowledge good is the skills good so that is something we really really thought covid did well for education transparency right right, right number right. 2 number 2 as as my favorite educator professor sugata mitra you know he's he's a ted talk winner and you should watch some and i recommend everyone watching should watch dr sugata mitra he did an experiment called hole in the wall he said if given enough resources students will learn yeah. i think covid gave you that uh, you know the idea of flip classrooms using technology using youtube using google earth and i and, and i've seen teachers in golden sparrow and across they they bought in a lot of programs which would not have happened i, I give an example oh, uh, yeah. sdg goals sustainable development goals i think through covid we were able to reach educators otherwise we would have not reached so i have roboto in mexico i have i have someone in 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 holland someone yeah. in sri lanka and wow. and and thomas friedman says the world is flat actually right. we brought world together right 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 that's amazing so we can only right. see the way forward and say let's capitalize on the good learnings and now when the schools open up let's pick up in the areas we were you know hit hard on hmm. cool yes yeah so i want to ask this question though because here some schools require that if you're coming to school you have to have a mask on or mm -hmm. so um, at a certain age children have to be vaccinated parents have to be vaccinated how is that politics happening in in uh, india you know do you have to have a mask on at school at your school for instance you know how, right. how do you do it? okay so so of course one of the decisions that that perhaps you know uh, people now were pushing in is when everything is opening up why aren't schools opening up uh, i understand the concerns with the numbers that we've got in india we all about numbers you know uh, we are the second uh, largest country in the world in terms of demographics and population so whatever happens in india you know on a small scale is equal to let's say a kuwait or a singapore because our numbers are so big so yeah. it is a challenge and i i think i commend the indian government for taking the vaccination drive uh, to every indian citizen uh, right now we are at a stage where we can say the maximum of adult population is vaccinated so they're safe okay. and all the teaching and non teaching staff at the school are vaccinated okay. now there's a drive to vaccinate the teenagers okay. if i can use the word you know and slowly hopefully we we open up our kids with equal protocols and and proper norms will be safe and we can take the world forward amazing yeah so that brings us now to school funding you know how is school funded in india for i'm going to give you an example here in the mm -hmm. united states private enterprises you know uh, the government with grants and loans uh, sponsoring school local government sponsoring school federal you know so um grants um funding for school is coming from all kinds of directions so how is that in india high school funding in india right okay so you know i think this is something that everybody is excited oh show me the money baby right where is yeah. the money coming from education <laughs> so so absolutely you know it, it, it's it's the same across in india in india uh, there is a rule that a school cannot make profit so every school has to be governed by a trust you know, the the registered wow. trust that you've got so yeah. every private school falls under the gambit of trust a private school could be a private entity so usually you will find two or three kind of private schools in india one is a community aided school so let's say uh, you know I, i belong to a state called gujarat so there's a gujarati community which is wow. you know all inclusive in terms of everybody can join in but it's supported financially by the local gujarati community oh, wow. it is also it also a private school could be a corporate school so one of the richest indians is mr ambani so his schools are, you know a, a chain of schools called the reliant schools across there are also private entities which run schools for example there is a there is a program called the ryan global so these are private schools run privately across there is there is a government aided school as well so the the indian government ensures 
that there is a there is a law called RTE, right to education. Every child at 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 a level must be educated. So these are schools which are under the under the government of India, funded by the state government or the central government, and they are a completely state of central government funded schools. Wow. So, so we have got Kendra Vidyalayas as as a part of it. No, I'm wow. just giving. And our board is the CBSE board, also that or a state board. Wow. Primarily, yes. Okay. So, um, if um, uh, do you have STEM and STEAM in India? Um, science, technology, engineering, and math, or science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, which is a newer movement. You know. How, yes, how, yes. how are those in how are those in India? Absolutely, you know, if you look at the amount of amount of researchers that are coming out from India, STEM and now, as you say, STEAM as as an added initiative in, into it is very integral part to our schooling system. Uh, yeah. Perhaps if you if you look at the new ed tech that are coming up in India, uh, there is a company called White Hat Junior, which incorporates uh, a lot of. Uh, coding for kids so there is robotics there is coding there is research into it in fact i i know of a particular organization which is focusing on on astronomy no so this is is developing curiosity in a in a child uh, yeah. i just want to add a concept a new acronym called heal uh, coming as an educator i say we must also look at stem and heal together so heal stands for humanities environment arts and language I think wow. we must embrace both. Yeah, I'm gonna humanity, environment, arts, and language. Oh. Heal! Wow, That's we amazing. need to heal the world now. Yeah, yes. yeah. And um, what about languages? Do you do you teach India in school, or is there another language that you teach in school? Maybe foreign languages. Correct. Uh, so every Indian school primarily would look at three languages. Uh, English is, is is by far the urban language in India, uh, mostly in, in the global language that we speak about, the language of communication, business, the language of literature. So that's, that's the language we use. Then there is a national language. Uh, so Hindi is a national language. Actually, it's not. Uh, there, are, there are multiple langu languages across, but generally Hindi is an accepted language, mostly in the central government schools. Then there is a regional language. So it could be Tamil, it could be Malayalam, it could be Marathi. And these are add-on languages. As Indians, as Indians, Brenda, you'll be surprised to know, every Indian literally is a polyglot. So wow. literally every Indian would know five languages. Oh, wow. And this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this makes me very proud. I, for, for instance, I can speak seven languages, including Tamil, Bengali, Gujarati, Urdu, you know, uh, Hindi, of course, uh, Sanskrit I studied in school along with English. So this is what makes us truly, you know, a, a, a very language savvy people. Wow. That's a, what, what about French or Germany or foreign languages what about that kind of language we always had an added language in school french primarily was the most common language uh, while it is not at such a mass level as i would love to have it because it is very uh, cosmetic or aesthetic unless somebody is very deep diving into it however we need to have more immersion labs and more exchange programs I put for for instance in Golden Sparrow we have German as as the international language. Uh, my my students are just doing a Japanese exchange program. So there is Japanese or Mandarin. So so there is Spanish, a very popular language that is that's across. So these are slowly getting added. Uh, perhaps a little bit thanks to to Netflix and and thanks to the new singers that keep popping in. And and I think BTS is getting Korean in in Indian languages now. Right, right, okay special needs you know um, all over the world there are challenges with special learning and special needs education and mm -hmm. children especially going back to the covid situation you know children that are special needs they need special training they need special education they need special teaching and they need mm -hmm. skilled teachers who can teach them the skills that they need for life i don't know how is that in india because in the united states it is very very emphasized Absolutely. even if we are still learning there's still improvement to be done it is emphasized here in the u.s in in nigeria for instance 
they are still working on special needs. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. something they have established as they should. And I just talked to a Kenya, same thing. Uh, the, uh, the Kenyan educational system needs a lot to work on when it comes to special needs education. So what right. do you think in India, how is special needs like? Right. Uh, so, so my wife is a special educator and we have a lot of these conversations around it. And I think I, I, uh, I concur with when she says a lot of grounds still need to be worked upon. While inclusive education is, is a big priority uh, in most of the private schools, it is also in most of the government schools. However, there is still a need for awareness. For example, a small as simple as a ramp, you know, for children with disability or a shadow teacher for, for students who need help across is, is a level of awareness that's required. More than anything, our students need to be inclusive in the thinking. Acceptability of a child with special needs. This child would be a slow learner. This child might be grunting. This child might not catch up. Uh, so they, there needs to be a lot of awareness, uh, Brenda, with special needs in India. However, we are going in the right direction. Uh, now we've accepted them. It's no more the case of bullying or, or you know, yeah. child being left out. But I still feel uh, there is a beautiful program by one of leading uh, companies or, or, or conglomerate in India, the Tatas. They run a program called Umid. Umid is uh, a Urdu word or a Hindi word. Uh, Asha is a Hindi word for hope. And oh. they have a beautiful special need chain across. Oh, wow. Yes. That's amazing. Going, going in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to add, uh, just course. if I could, can I? Uh, along with special needs and while we understand, in the pandemic, there was a huge need for mental health. Students felt averse. Students felt depressed, anxious, anger issues. Uh, we had a very upcoming talented actor who committed suicide, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a trend I see in our young adults, young learners. So as much as we're emphasizing on these learning spaces, there's still a big area to grow on. Right, right. And, and mental health is very important. On on my show yes. as well, I, I, I emphasize mental health for educators, you know, for children, for parents, because there's a lot going on in the world, you know. And, you, and you're right, COVID brought a lot of uh, worries, a lot of troubles, and people are still going through all of the effects of, um, of that pandemic situation. So yeah, that's something to look into you know, in all countries. Okay, so, and then this brings us to something very important within the school system, extracurricular activities. In the United States, it's a major, major thing. Um, children have to be, I mean, it's not compulsory, but uh, many parents will put their children in sports, in music, in dance, in drama, in all kinds of um, extracurricular activities, just to engage them, you know, mentally, physically, to engage them. And um, how is how is extracurricular activities in India? Uh, all right. So again, it's a work in progress. Uh, the reason I say that is a lot of schools, in fact, every single school have an extracurricular activity. However, it's still relegated to the third tier of a school's learning. You know, if you are an art student or a music student, or if you are doing something something on a project, it's relegated not at a top premium level. You're not given the kind of value that, say, a maths or a science education is given. Yeah. Unfortunately, it brings a child to a conclusion that, all right, my teacher will value me if I only score well in AY, you know, English, maths and science. Uh, so, so, however, however, a uh, lot of students are coming up. There's a lot of creativity in India. Uh, you know, you can you can find bloggers and YouTubers and and chefs. So these are a step towards the right direction. In my personal opinion, uh, I, there are two things I strongly do, and I work with them. I, I created a curriculum called the Candle uh, on life skills. So what I believe is. As a part of the extracurricular, every child at least must know the 10 life skills designated by World Health Organization and UNESCO, which includes problem solving, decision making, you know, uh, empathy, interpersonal, intrapersonal uh, interactions. So these should be part of like public speaking should be part of a, a program. 
along with that the sdg goals you know we are truly not literate if we do not work towards the better planet A as we say that there is no plan b because we don't have no planet b so so very essential part of a child's growing along with sports and arts is the growth in in fields other than the academics and and uh, this brings me to the next thing focus of learning you know um and i was telling you i grew up in nigeria i um, i did most of my um pre you know learning in nigeria and the focus of learning there was you have to excel you have to have an a you have to come first you have to have excellence you know and and those grades existed and we i mean how can everybody in the classroom get first or second or third? But that was what we were working towards, passing an exam, doing well in an exam, you know? That was the focus of education, uh, competency um, education, not skills, but competency. So how is education, and, and also coming to the United States, if I ask the question, I realized it was a whole nother ball game in the United States. You know, in the United States, education is on skills. And it took, it took me a while to adapt to learning in the U.S. because I had learned in a different way back in, in Africa. So how is that in, in um, you know, how is that in India? What is the focus of learning? What's the focus of education? All right. Uh, so I know I, I think, Brenda, you're very fortunate to be able to compare two very different cultures, two yeah. very different continents. So you compare the African continent with the North American version and, and the conclusion you bring are, are, are very, very uh, you know profound. Uh, India being as diverse, I can see two kind of focus of learnings, two kind of center of attention, student centric approach and a parent centric approach. So I'll take a very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, interesting anecdote. So I, I counsel a lot of parents in my, in my conversation. I have a lot of parents coming in. So I was speaking to a parent and think of this parent centric approach. So I said, what would you like your child to be? And the mother who was there, she said, I want my child to have A plus scores in English. I want my child to debate very well. I want my child to be a great swimmer. I want my child to be a singer. And I want my child to be a great athlete, a, a black belt in karate. And I, I paused, I smiled and I said, ma'am, why don't you have five children? Oh, you know, <laughs> the, the idea is your expectations are so uh -huh. many for one child. Yeah. And yeah. that's the burden. That's a burden of expectation every single Indian child carries. Unfortunately, we thrust our dreams, things we could not be, onto our children. So a lot of schools are moving towards focus of learning to student-centric approach which is where our our you know our our mental health programs and our awareness programs become a part of it so in golden sparrow the work i do we have something called passion project what are you passionate about entrepreneurship go ahead and learn about it wow. arts go ahead and learn about it. public speaking go ahead and learn so if we can shift the focus of learning to student centric approach trust me as a nation will excel as an education fraternity we'll have so much to give to the world that's amazing. And and um brings me to the next question, which is discipline in education. Discipline is a major problem across the globe, you know. How do we get children to sit and listen? How do we get them to participate in learning? Um, you know, without devices. Um yes. in the United States, discipline is positive reinforcement. So no yelling mm -hmm. at the child. You know, no bringing the child down, no shaming, which the great system does in you know countries that are still doing the great great system. Um, in right. India, you know, what is discipline like? What are your discipline strategies? And 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 before I forget to say, in some other countries, they still use corporal punishment, which is not right. welcome right. at all. Absolutely. You know, so how is India like with discipline? That's right. You know, trust me. Uh, Again, I keep coming back to the idea that India is so diverse and so rich in its it, 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 different kind of societies we are in. It's very difficult to pin down one strategy wow. and then say this is India-centric strategy. However, however, you know, 
traditionally we had the carrot and the stick policy so you know you always were using the traditional means of encouraging them you were you were you were you know asking them with grades and stickers and and you know praises and then there was always a stick which would be you know you 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 your physical corporal punishment absolutely no yes uh, you know you might find schools which have not reached a level but no that's not that's not the case but there is always a punishment in terms of okay stand outside the classroom or kneel down or things like that or, or you know one of the favorite ones we had in in the indian system was write something down i will not talk in class 100 times i don't know if you had it <laughs> It did not stop me from talking, Brenda, but it did improve my handwriting for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think I think as we move towards a more progressive education system, I see discipline as, as you rightly said, what I usually call freedom with fences. Let's say let's say the use of technology. So we use the word where we say you allow the freedom. Teachers and schools and educators and parents trust the children, but there are fences around. you need to have uh, you know you know uh, you need to disable uh, certain add-ons to your child's uh, technology right. you need right. to have a time limit so this perhaps is a little more standard approach that indians use in schooling system wow that's amazing and um and that that's the last question we have um i just want to say it's been amazing talking to you today learning about indi i've always been so curious i'm sure like me many educators have been curious about indian education because i've never had an indian student who did not excel i'm telling you beyond everybody else in the classroom so i've always wondered what is the what is it about india that's pushing these children you know to excel in class and i'm glad i've learned it's um you know you start from the basics and then you, you move up and you know and there are still learnings to be done there are still growth to be done there are still things to change but um thank you so much for um, this yeah. conversation thank you so much brenda and i say as indians we very proud of our culture and legacy so when somebody mentions about mathematics we speak about ramanujan who still being spoken about in high regards in in uh, in the trinity college in london so we have a legacy so as as indians we are very proud of the legacy we are left behind and hopefully the young children reaps on the legacy and takes the word forward so i think yeah. it was my pleasure you know having you know uh, you having me on the show and it was uh, great interacting with you thank you so much thank you and i did see a movie about the mathematician you just talked about and i was impressed i was i mean i did make me cry because it, towards the end you know it ended in a very sad way but i